Uh, in this tutorial, I will give an overview of simulation and control in LabVIEW. So the contents is, um, first a short introduction to control system, an overview of the PID controller, which is the fun fundamental part of a control system. In this tutorial, I will use the LabVIEW control design and simulation module. This is an add-on package to LabVIEW. I will provide some practical examples. I will just implement a basic first order uh, mathematical model and then uh, I will simulate that uh, mathematical model uh, using LabVIEW and the LabVIEW control design and simulation module and then I will create a basic control system where I use the built-in PID controller which is part of the LabVIEW control design and simulation module. So then let's start with our basic uh, control system. So the purpose with our control system is to control a dynamic system. It could be an industrial process, an airplane, a self-driven car, uh, etc. Basically, uh, control systems uh, today is uh, everywhere in the in the industry, in different um, cars. It is in the heater systems. It is basically uh, everywhere in in the world today. And here you see a. Uh, sketch of a basic control system. So the basic purpose is to control a given process, which could be, uh, uh, as mentioned, an industrial process, uh, etc. In this tutorial, I will use a first order uh, mathematical model, which we will implement and simulate in LabVIEW. And then the purpose is to control this process using a controller and the most used controller today is a PID controller. And then the purpose is to make sure that the process is on the reference value, uh, typically noted R in a control system. So basically that's the basic purpose with a control system, is to make sure that the process is on a given reference value using a controller, and then typically we will use a PID controller. So as mentioned, the PID controller is uh, uh, the most important part in the control system. So basically, um, uh, we have uh, many different types of controllers, but the PID controller is the most used controller today. Uh, I guess it's many reasons uh, why the PID controller is so uh, famous uh, or popular. But I basically, it's uh, easy to understand and easy to use and implement. And also there are very few tuning parameters uh, when it comes to the PID controller. So here you see the PID uh, controller uh, algorithm that is implemented in um, commercial PID controllers, or you can implement it in LabVIEW or C Sharp or other programming languages. And also uh, using this, um, this add-on to LabVIEW, this um, LabVIEW uh, control design and simulation module, uh, that package also have several PID uh, controllers uh, included. Uh, PID controller uh, consists of three uh, different parts. It is a prop proportional part, uh, where KP is the proportional gain. And then we have an integral time part, where TI is the integral time. And then we have a derivative uh, part where TD is the derivative time. So we uh, basically have three tuning parameters when it comes to a uh, basic PID controller, namely the proportional part KP and the integral part TI and the derivative part TD. So how can we implement a uh, simulation and control system in uh, LabVIEW? Uh, of course, you can do everything from scratch, uh, but you can also use the LabVIEW control design and simulation module. This package com comes with uh, lots of features for creating simulators, creating uh, control systems, etc. So basically, uh, the LabVIEW control design and simulation module is a separate uh, LabVIEW module. It offers features for design uh, control systems. It offers features for simulation of mathematical models, uh, implementations of uh, control systems. It has built-in PID controllers, and it has built-in uh, MPC controllers, 
short for model predictive control. It has feature for system identification and system esti uh, estimation and Kalman filters, etc. So as mentioned, this is a separate module that you need to install separately. So basically search for labu control design and simulation module uh, on the internet and then we'll come to the download page on the, on the NI uh, web page. NI is the provider of the labu software. So basically select the proper operating system, the proper version uh, and then just download and install uh, this package. So after you have installed this uh, module or this package, uh, this palette will pop up in the LabVIEW programming environment and it has different sub palettes, one for PID, which you see here, here you have different PID uh, controllers. The most used are this uh, basic PID controller and this PID advanced, but you have also other PID controllers that you can use for special purposes. But I guess those are the most used those basic PID and the PID advanced. And then you have um, functionality for simulation, control design, system identification, etc. And here you see the simulation palette where you have functions and fe features that you can use when creating a simulator in, in LabVIEW. And also in the control design you have lots of features that you can use in order to create different types of models, uh, transfer models, state space models, etc. So let's uh, start with some practical examples. So you will start uh, implementing a basic first order uh, process or a first order uh, mathematical model. So basically here you see a first order system or a first order process or a first order uh, differential equation. So basically this is the differential equation or the first order system that we are going to use in, in this tutorial. So we will implement it in, in LabVIEW and we will simulate it and then finally we will create a basic control system that is controlling this uh, uh, mathematical process. So in order to simulate that or this model in LabVIEW you can uh, do it in many different ways. You can make a discrete version of that model and implement uh, the discrete version of the differential equation. Um, in this tutorial we will make a simple block diagram uh, using the features which is part of the LabVIEW control design and simulation module. So basically uh, a differential uh, equation given like this can also be described or put into a block a diagram a model uh, like this. Uh, so here you have uh, blocks for A and B, which is in this case just constants. So you have A and B, and then since the purpose with the simulation is to find or plot uh, the output X, we need also to use an integrator. So on the left side of here we have the derivative of X, and then by integrating that we will get X. So basically uh, this is uh, the block diagram version of the differential equation that we will use and implement in a LabVIEW and you need uh, three blocks, uh, a gain block or a multiplication block A and B and an integrator uh, block, summation um, block and basically all these blocks are part of the LabVIEW, um, this uh, additional package to LabVIEW, this design a module and a design and simulation module in LabVIEW. So the simulation, the design and simulation module in LabVIEW has these blocks included. So let's see how we can implement this basic first order differential equation using LabVIEW. So now I have opened my LabVIEW programming environment. You can start by a file new and then here you see the basic features of LabVIEW here. It's the front panel where you create uh, your graphical user interface and here is the uh, block diagram where you cr actually create the code itself. And now I have installed this uh, LabVIEW control design and simulation module and then when I right click here in the block diagram I will find this palette control and simulation. I will just pin it and here we have all the features for this 
uh, lab you control design and simulation module. So here we have the PID palette, where we have the basic PID controller, we have the PI PID advanced, and we have other types of PID controllers. Here we have the simulation palette, which we will use uh, in combination with this PID palette. So here we have uh, um, different types of sub palettes. We will typically use uh, this uh, this sub palette signal array admit. Here we have the gain that we will use. We have the summation and we have multiplication that we will use. And then we also need an uh, integrator. So we find the integrator here in continuous linear systems. Here we have, um, uh, sorry, not this one. Uh, in um, yeah, here in the continuous linear system. Uh, so here we have the integrator. We have uh, also tra transport delay, time delay. We have uh, here we have state space model, transfer function, uh, derivative, etc. Here we also have a uh, PID controller here, we have Kalman filter, etc. But basically, we need to use the integrator and we need to, need to use this gain, summation, and multiplication. The special things about these uh, blocks in the um, control design and simulation module, they are not working on an ordinary block diagram like this. So when I try to put this one on the block diagram, I'm not allowed to do that uh, because these blocks uh, need to be used in a special uh, special way, either you can use the control simulation, control and simulation loop, uh, like this. And then you see the background here is uh, uh, yellow, while the background for an ordinary block uh, diagram is uh, white. So no, I can actually put these blocks inside this um, control and simulation loop. So we can use the control and simulation loop, but typically I prefer an ordinary uh, while loop instead. And in order to implement these uh, functions in a while loop, typically we need to create a so-called simulation subsystem, which you find here under File, File, and click New, and then uh, Create New, and then you have different options here, Simulation Subsystem. So we choose this one simulation subsystem. Click OK. And then now you see in this simulation subsystem, I guess a uh, simulation subsystem is basically the same as a sub VI, but the main difference is that in a simulation subsystem we can use these um, blocks, which is part of the control design and simulation module. So you see the background here in a simulation subsystem is yellow which is the same background as in this control and simulation group. So basically now we can use these uh, blocks as part of our uh, block diagram, like this. So uh, now we are actually ready to, 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 uh, to be starting the implementation of our differential equation. So this is our differential equation. And as mentioned, it can be described as this uh, block diagram. So basically, uh, Let's see how we can implement this block diagram in LabVIEW. So then we have already made this uh, subsystem. I just uh, remove everything here and start from scratch. We don't need this one now. So we only need this uh, subsystem. And then we are ready to implement this um, um, block diagram for this um, mathematical model and basically we need to have two numerics one for this uh, a sorry we can call it a and then a could be so let's just set a start value for a so a and b is just constants in this um, mathematical model so you can just set it to 0 25 or something of course you can use other values so then we have a and then make uh, b as well, and then we can just set b equals to 2, uh, like this. We need also a controller in this case. We are only simulating the process. Uh, typically, we will perform a step response, so then we just set the control value equals to 1, meaning we will perform a step response uh, simulation. And finally, we need a 
so now we have these three um, and also we need a numeric indicator we need the output of the mathematical model which is x in this case so now i guess we have all we need so these are these a and b are model parameters u is the control signal and x is the output of of the mathematical model so now we are ready to start uh, implementing this system here in the sub uh, system uh, block diagram so then i guess we can start with the uh, integrator block which we find here under continuous linear system we just use this one and then the output should be this x uh, like this and then we find some uh, multiplication blocks which we find here so we need two of those and then uh, we can also so know the inputs to this one is on the left side and output is on the right side we can also right click on it and then reverse terminals so now we the inputs will be on the right side and the outputs will be on the on the left side so then you know create the feedback loop which is x multiplied with uh, this um, a and this should go back here and back to the integrator and then we need a summation block so then the output here should go to the minus here and then equal should go into the integrator so basically here we have dx uh, dt the derivative is here and then when we use an integrator we will have x here on on the right side of the integrator and then and the control signal uh, is typically on the left side goes to this multiplication block and this should be multiplied with uh, the constant uh, b uh, like this and output goes into the summation point like this so basically this is the, um, uh, the same block diagram as you saw so earlier in the in the powerpoint so basically now we have created uh, and finished the mathematical model so this is the block diagram implementation of a basic differential e equation a first order differential equation in this case so now we want to simulate this model and typically we then just uh, create a new uh, vi and i have already a vi open here this one so typically we want to use this simulation subsystem inside our main application which we will create here so basically we use a simulation subsystem in the same way as we use a, a sub vi and then i just start creating uh, the front panel uh, of the main application and uh, we want to simulate the system and plot the system so i just create a basic uh, waveform chart I create a basic um, stop button like this then I go to the block diagram which is so far empty I want to create a while uh, loop so then I just create a while loop here the stop button here in the bottom connect to this um, while loop condition have a while loop here and then basically i want to include this subsystem inside my main application so then i just need to save it so i click ctrl s and i save it on my hard drive then i just have a local folder here on my computer I will save it so then uh, so I just call it the mathematical model or something and save it and then basically I can just drag the icon here and use it here in the my main application and also as we do for subvis we need to make inputs and outputs and then we have use this um, terminal here 
terminal icon here in, in, the, um, in the upper right corner where we define inputs and outputs and then we have A and B should be input and the control signal should be an input and X should be an output and then we put the inputs on the left side and the outputs here on the right side and then we just start clicking on the different inputs on the left side so U should be an input B should be an input and then finally so A and uh, let's start from scratch um, so now this U is an input we have I just remove um, B and put it in the correct order so like this then I mark here A as an input and then B as an input like this and then finally X as an output like this. So now we have defined three inputs and one output. Now I can, now can, can just save it like this. And I can uh, basically close it because I have it here now in my main application. So this is the simulation uh, sub uh, we, have, we have just created. I can also right click on it and select open subsystem and then I will open the uh, the simulation subsystem. So here you see the block diagram and here you see the front panel. And now I can um, start creating also these. Um, so I start by open the subsystem. I just copy those and use those in the main application. I can just uh, put them on top of the chart. So we have A, B, which is the model parameters, and then U is the control signal. So here we are not using a PID controller, we just use a manual control signal, because we are only going to simulate the mathematical model using a step response. And then we set just U, U equals to 1. Uh, like this. Just make sure that the front panel looks pretty nice like this and then we can also so the time here will be in seconds the x-axis and then on the y-axis we will plot the um, the process output the output of the model namely x typically we want to include a unit here also but this is just a basic first order mathematical model where there is no unit here in this basic example, but typically you also want to have the unit here on the y-axis. So then let's just finalize our system. Let's go to the block diagram. And then basically we have A, B and U. And then here you see on this mathematical model, which is the SES system, we have the different inputs. We have B, which is here. And the next input is uh, A, which is here. Then the last input is U, so then we put it here. I'm oh, sorry. U should be put to this one. And then I just make Y loop a little bit uh, smaller like this I make sure these are on line using the lining tool alignment tool and then typically we need to use a, a weight here in the corner and then you just specify a simulation uh, step create constant and then typically you can use one this is in uh, milliseconds and then you just specify 100 um, like this so now the simulation time will be 100 
uh, where the simulation step will be um, 100 milliseconds or one zero point one seconds. And then on the right side here we have the output x, which we just put on wire to the waveform chart, like this. Typically we also want to have the current value, so we can also create a numeric indicator for x. We just call it x like this, and then we'll also wire uh, it like this. So basically now we are finished with our main application that are going to simulate this uh, basic uh, first order mathematical model. So let's just run our application. Let's start it. And then uh, before we start it, we can, I guess, we can yeah, um, fine tune the axis here. So then we set the x axis from uh, 1 to 20 seconds. We can turn off the auto scale on the y axis and then we can set from 0 to 10 or something and now let's see um, we also want to save it so we can save it uh, our main application as um, simulation system or something and just save it and now let's run it and let's see how this is working so, so far the simulation was not working so well, so we need to go to the... Um, because we have set a simulation step to be uh, 0.1 second, and then typically we need to do that in the chart as well. We can do it in different ways. Um, let's start by just right click on the chart, select properties, and then scales. And then we have the offset, which is typically 0, because we want to start on 0. And then we have the multiplier. Um, when the mul default multiplier is 1, meaning that the step should be 1 second, but we have a simulation step of 0 0.1 second, so then we just set 0 0.1 second here, and click OK. And let's run, save, and run the simulation once more. So you see, um, I can also set the x-axis from 0 to 20 like this and let's run it once more and we also want to to, to, to remi remove all the data uh, we can do that in different ways we can um, um, click here on the right so we can click here on the right select data operations and clear chart and then run it you see now now we have a pretty good simulation of the mathematical model and you see after a step in the control signal the process value will reach a steady state value and in this case it seems that the steady state value will be 8 so after uh, a long simulation time uh, the output will remain on 8 in this case so basically this is a a basic simulation of a first order uh, system in LabVIEW. And in order to improve it a bit, we typically don't want to right click here, select data operation, clear the chart every time we run the application. So typically we can use a property node instead. So then, here in our block diagram, I can right click on the waveform chart, create. Uh, property node and then we start by this um, history data so I just put the property node here outside the value because we want to use it uh, be in, in the initial initialization of the program before this simulation starts and then we need to right click to set it on uh, change all to right and then we just right click here create constant this is an empty array meaning we just clear all the data that is in that are present in the plot when we start the simulation and then i can just the arrow out here i just put it on the border here on on the while loop so this is the while loop and also this um, since we typically also want to change the simulation time uh, we 
it's also difficult to, to go in here and change this multiplier every time. So you can also use a property node for that. So then I just make this one uh, a little bit bigger. And then I select. So then I just select here uh, instead of history, I select X scale. Go to offset and multiply. I start with offset. So this offset is the starting value. I typically always zero. So then create constant, set it to zero. And then one more, we select here, X scale. And then also we select the multiplier. And here basically this is the um, simulation step. And in this case, we are using a simulation step of 0 0.1 second, uh, like this. So now we have created a property node where we clear the history uh, before we run a new simulation. So all the data points will uh, be removed. And we set that the simulation should start on uh, zero and, um, and like this. And then we set the, the multiplier, meaning we set the step response in the simulation, which is in this case 100 millisecond or 0 0.1 second. So basically, uh, this should be it. So let's just run it now. So now you see it starts on zero. And then you can set the end value here. And you see we have a nice simulation starting on zero after a step, step response after an initial step of one. And it goes to a steady state value in this case, which is equal to eight. You can stop the simulation. We can run it once more. And then you see it starts on zero. And it using this uh, correct simulation step. We can also specify the simulation step here in the font panel. We can just create a numeric control. We can use TS for simulation step and then set 0 0.1 uh, like this. And then we can use this as an input here instead of 0 0.1 like this. And then here, instead of 100 milliseconds, we can use a local variable of this one. Create a local variable. So this is the simulation step. And then we need to have a simple uh, multiplication block. So since this is in seconds and this is, is, is in milliseconds, we just need to multiply. Uh, and set this to right click, change to read and just multiply with 1000 in order to convert from seconds to milliseconds like this. Let me just connect this one to the weight block. So basically now we have created the final simulation system that are simulating this first order mathematical model we find here. Just open subsystem and then you have the implementation of the mathematical model here in a simulation subsystem. And then we just go to the block diagram and run the simulation like this. So, uh, so far we have created a model of a mathematical model, a first order differential equation in uh, LabVIEW and we have simulated uh, the, the mathematical model. So the next step now is to create a control system where we use a PID controller in order to control uh, the mathematical model. So basically, we are going to implement a system like this. So we have already created the mathematical model of the first order differential equation, as you see here. And now we need to add or include a PID controller in our system. And the output of the model or the process should be going back to the controller. And then we have a reference value. This is uh, the set point because we want to, the output of the process to be on a certain level. This is the reference value or the set point. And then the controller calculates the error between the reference value and the actual uh, value. And then it uses the PID uh, algorithm in order to, uh, to control, uh, sorry, to calculate 
a proper control signal that is applied to the uh, process or the, in this case the mathematical model. So let's see how we can include this PID controller in our uh, lab example. So here you see the, um, the previous example where we was implementing this mathematical model as a service system. This is the implementation of the mathematical model, this first order differential equation. We was using this simulation service system inside our main application inside a while loop. And then we could simulate it uh, where A and B is just constants to the mathematical model and U is the control signal. In this case we have no controller so it's we just use a step um, step signal for the U and then we can perform a step response in our simulation like this. So then after initial step in the control uh, value and uh, output of the model will behave like this. So the next step now is to include a PID controller. So then basically we just go to the block diagram, make our block diagram a little bit um, uh, bigger like this. So we have space in order to uh, implement the PID controller. So this is the mathematical model and then we have sp a space here to put in the PID controller. So then we just use the built-in PID controller in the uh, control design and simulation module. And then you have the PID palette here. We have different PID um, blocks that we can use. For basic um, and simple application, we can just use this uh, default, this PID.vi. For more advanced application, we can use this PID advanced. But let's start using this one. And then if I click Control H, you will see this um, help window where we have different inputs. We have the output, which is uh, the output is the control signal. And then we have the set point, so we need to set the set point here as an input to this PID block. We have the process value, which is the output of the mathematical model, uh, x in this case. Um, and we have the PID gains, that's the PID parameters that we need to set. So basically that's it, so let's just uh, start by, uh, so the output of this one, this uh, output. Uh, should be replaced. So this is the manual control signal. We don't need this one anymore. So you can remove it and then instead use the output of this PID block uh, uh, like this. And now uh, the input, the um, the process value is this one, so we need to have a feedback loop here. We can implement that in different ways. One way is to use a shift register, so then we just right click here on the while loop border and then add shift register. And then uh, just uh, find a numeric, a double numeric constant, put it here. So this should be the initial value of the process value. So then you can just add a label here, label. So this is initial uh, process value. Value in this case, we just set it to zero. And then the output of um, the mathematical model, which, which is the process value, we just wire it to the shift register here on the right border. And then the input here, the process value on the PID uh, controller is wired to the left border of the shift uh, shift register like this. So basically this is the process value and now we need to specify uh, the PID uh, parameters. So then I just start by going to my front panel and then I just start to create three numeric controls, then one for KP. So this is the proportional gain of the PID controller and then T 
ti, which is the integral time. And then finally the, the derivative time, which is t, d. So then these are the three um, parameters that we need to set on the PID uh, controller. Typically also set the units here. This kp doesn't have any unit, but ti is typically in seconds. So then I just set seconds here. Same for the ti. So the unit is in second, uh, like this. Also we have the output here, x, output of the process. In this, um, this is just a general first order um, uh, differential e equation we use, but we can assume this is a differential equation for a temp uh, temperature system. So then we can just pretend that uh, um, the unit for x is um, degrees Celsius, and then we can also put that unit on the y-axis as well, like this. So the output of the process is x has the unit uh, temperature, the temperature in degrees Celsius. In the, uh, this um, this uh, basic example. So now we go back. We need to uh, these tuning parameters for the PID control. We need to uh, wire them to our PID controller, which is here. So we have KP, TI, and TD, and then use the alignment tool like this. Put it on the um, left alignment and equal alignment like this. And now we need to co uh, connect them to this PID gain. And then you see, if I just uh, right click on this one, this PID gains, this is actually a cluster. So then we need here just to use this um, cluster bundle, which we find here. This um, under cluster palette here, this uh, bundle. And also, uh, if you see here, the input to the PID controller, it uses TI in minutes and TD in minutes, but here on our front panel, we want to have TI and TD in seconds. So then we just need to uh, divide by uh, 60. So then we use the divide block here for TI and divide uh, by 60, since this one is in seconds, and this one requires ti in minutes, like this. And the same for ti, td, uh, like this. So now uh, the units should be correct. So ti, td in seconds here in this application. That this block requires those in minutes, so we just divide by 60. And now we can use this uh, bundle block. So we just bundle KP TI, and then we just drag it to make it one input larger. And then finally this TD, and then this. PID parameter should then be wired to this PID block. I just also add this label here. This. So then we have this input PID gains that we wire to the PID block. And now we have uh, wired um, the process variable as an input, the control signal as an output. We have wired the uh, PID parameters KP, TI, and TD. And the last thing we need now is the set point. So then we can just create a new a numeric uh, control here and call it set point or the reference value. And then uh, since we know the process output has the unit degree Celsius, also the set point needs to have the same unit, so degree Celsius. I just used the alignment tool to make sure it, it's on like this. I can align those so they those. So now our um, user interface starts to look uh, nice like this. I can align those as well. So uh, and then we need to wire this set point to this. Um, 
set point input um, like this. So that's all we need, I guess. So the only thing that is missing now is to set values for KP, TI, TD and set a set point. So uh, normally we should use a PID tuning uh, method in order to find proper PID parameters. We could use uh, Siegler Nichols, Skogsta, etc. But no, I just set some values. So I set KP equals to 0 0.3. I set TI equals to 4. And then I just want to use a PI controller, meaning I want to set the TD equals to 0. And then the set points, let's uh, set the set point equal to 6 degrees or something. We can change it later. And now I can also um, select these um, controllers, right click, to just make sure uh, these. Uh, so next time we, we open this application, we, we, we don't want to add those values every time, so we can just go to edit and make current values default and then these values will be there next time uh, we open application. But let's just now run the application, click on the run button and now you see the output are quite soon reaching uh, the set point which in this case is 6, six degrees Celsius using this um, PID parameters, which is the built-in PID parameter in, in the lab here. We can also change the, uh, the set point while uh, our application is running. So let's change it to 10 degrees Celsius. And then you see uh, the system or the uh, controller starts to react. We can change the uh, y-axis to 15 or something. And then you see this is the actual output and you see it's now reaching the new set point, which is 10 degrees Celsius. You can change it to 20 degrees Celsius and then you see, you can change the y-axis here to 25 or something. And then you see it is now reaching the new set point, which is 20 degrees Celsius. You can change it back to, um, let's say 12 and then you see The PID controller makes sure that we stay on 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 the set point or the reference value. So and this was our final uh, control system, and here you see the entire uh, code for that application. So we have implemented a first order mathematical model. We have implemented a control system using the built-in PID controller, and we are plotting the output in a waveform chart like this. So that's all, so thank you and goodbye.